ladies, I'm a minority now. And uh, that feels a bit strange, to be honest, because I'm in the printing industry. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's true, though. Yeah? That's, that's true. true. Uh, Adam Monroe, uh, welcome to uh, this Learn With Us session here. Uh, uh, this uh, wonderful day in Scotland and uh, in, uh, in uh, it, I can't remember which cities. Are you from, uh, Jean? Cape Town. Cape Town, South Africa, and I'm just outside Copenhagen in Denmark. So this is a truly international opportunity. And before we're going to to listen more to what you have to say, Isla, please introduce yourself. Oh, thank you very much. Um, so good afternoon. I am Isla Monroe. I am the managing director of the Dragonfly Agency. Um, we are a direct marketing agency based in Edinburgh in the UK and also in Cape Town in South Africa. Oh, really? And we help oh. our clients to grow their full potential through the wonderful world of direct mail and direct marketing. So I'm looking forward to explaining a bit more about all of this in my presentation today. I can't help think about when you say Edinburgh, I thought it was in Scotland, but you uh, apparently seems to be in the UK then. Oh, for now, yeah, let's not go into a political uh, debate just yet. <laughs> was too much going on in the world. I, I was not trying to be in a political debate. I was just thinking that I thought actually that that people uh, uh, in in uh, in Great Britain was very focused on whether it was Wales or Scotland or or you know. So uh, I was uh, I was more surprised when you said that. I, I, it was not to raise a political debate. <laughs> So, uh, Ayla, the Dragonfly Agency, uh, what what kind of company are you managing? So, um, we, I like to think, are a bit of, a, of the world's best kept secret. Um, in, in terms of our people, um, we've got some of the best experienced marketeers. Um, there's not a lot of us. We're small in number, but we're great in stature. So dynamic, we, dynamic. So, we're delivering um, large campaigns for our clients. Um, across, as I said, the UK and South Africa. Um, so we have got lots of um, snippets that I'm going to share in this presentation today. And um, Jean, um, you were the one that actually found Isla and, and uh, asked her to participate in this event. So uh, uh, did you know that she was also having a business operating out of South Africa? Well, actually, I found the business in South Africa, oh, really? which is okay. how I found Isla. Okay. So, um, you know, somebody told me about this agency here that loved direct mail and direct mail doesn't work in Africa to, like we'd like it to because of the postage system. Um, anyway, when I found this group of, I've got to say women because they are, there's another gene there as well, but they are a dynamic team. Um, and I've got to say, just so with the program um, and full of energy, full of life. And, um, you know, we were discussing campaigns and how we're going to change, how we're going to change the nation, if you want to call it that. And they, uh, they told me about Isla, you know, who runs, and I obviously knew about her via um, a couple of customers that I've worked with in my past when I lived in the UK. So that's kind of how we touch base. And they work in Inkjet and they do a lot of campaigns in Inkjet. So our paths crossed all over, I've got to say. And I'm so excited for the session, Isla, because it's. I know you know what we're talking about because you do it. Thank Which you. is, uh, I think, uh, maybe uh, one of the best lead-ins to actually do your presentation, right? So uh, then we have time for the Q&A afterwards where we can ask all the critical questions about uh, <laughs> agencies and how they use the technology. And, and yeah, so uh, are you ready to dig in or how, how is it for you? Yeah, perfect. I've got some slides I'd love to share. If that's okay, I'll just do that now. Totally fine. And while you do that, I can just say to both you and to the audience that Jean and I will be listening and watching what you are presenting, but we will turn off our cameras and sound. So the stage is yours, Isla. That's okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. There we go. Thank you very much for that kind introduction. So in the next half hour or so, I'm going to talk to you about maximizing your direct marketing and print from an agency perspective. I'm going to begin by introducing Dragonfly, um, who we are and how we work. And then I'm going to talk about direct mail, the journey that we've been on and the role it plays today. I'm going to look at the science behind personalization and the ways that Inkjet help with that. And then I'm going to share with you some examples before finishing up with an open and an honest ask 
to the print service providers out there who are lucky enough to have these amazing resources. So as I mentioned, Dragonfly, we're a UK and South African based direct marketing agency, and we've been operating for 10 years now. We have sent everything from letters and parcels, ranging from your traditional A4 letter in a C5 envelope to more obscure and wonderful things like branded dog bandanas. We absolutely love direct mail. We love everything about it. We love helping our clients grow. We love testing and innovating and learning. We love the creative flair. We love everything about paper stocks. We love everything about ink finishes. We love the Royal Mail who help us to deliver in the UK and Sao Paulo who help us in South Africa. And of course, it's all about our clients and our suppliers who help make it happen. So the craft of direct mail is just like any other marketing channel. It's about speaking to the right people at the right time with the right message. It's no surprise then that direct mail is the third largest media channel in the UK after TV and digital. It's worth an estimated £1.7 billion annually. I always like to think when we as a team are addressing direct mail campaigns that it's just like your own contacts that you have in your own mobile phone. You've got people that you'll WhatsApp every day. You've got people that you'll send a birthday card to. You've got people you'll phone when you've got some exciting news that you want to share. Direct mail is exactly the same principle, except we're helping brands and companies achieve this on a much larger scale and speaking to much larger audiences. Of course, direct mail takes clever planning. Um, we have to set goals. We have to make sure we're speaking to the right people and the data is absolutely fundamental to that. We have to establish our message and our tone of voice. We have to be clear, we have to avoid waffle. We have to communicate the offer. We have to create powerful calls to action. And the fun part is the design and the print execution as to what it looks and feels like. We're very proud here at Dragonfly about the volumes of printed marketing we help create and circulate. And 2020 was no exception to that. We mailed over 27 million direct mail packs, we printed and we profiled over 25 million door drops, and we printed over 118 million press inserts, and that was just from our UK business alone. However, what I'm going to talk to you about today in my presentation is about how direct mail has changed considerably over the years. The old school spray and pray, as it was known, technique no longer works. We're now creating and sending highly targeted and hyper-personalized mail that we can track. And what is hugely exciting is that Inkjet is helping to drive this agenda. We all know that COVID has changed the world and it too has brought some positives. In the last year alone, in a recent poll of Print, print Week readers, they were asked, has direct mail that you received changed since the start of the pandemic? And it's wonderful to see that nearly a quarter, 24%, said that the mail they're now receiving is more targeted. And this is what I want to continue to explore today. So at Dragonfly, we're all about engaging the future customer. And as a direct marketing agency, we work very simply. We work as an extension of our client's team and our suppliers are very much our colleagues who are coming on the journey with us. So it all begins with the brief. Who are we speaking to? Who's in our data? What are the objectives that we need to address? What are our KPIs? What learnings have we had from previous campaigns? We then agree a budget and a time scale, and we present this in a request for quote, which goes out to our print service providers. And then that's when the exciting part happens. That's when we start to look at formats, we start to look at ideas, we start to talk prices, we start to look at negotiations, and we come together as a team. Now, direct mail is very much about technology and innovation. And in the next few slides, I want to address why this is so important right now. So first up, a very brief marketing history. In the 1400s, our printing presses were invented. In the 1800s, we saw press news. In the 1920s, radio adverts. In the 1950s, television. In the 80s, we saw database marketing and direct mail. In the 90s, we saw the introduction of the internet and with that came e-commerce, which then led into the social media and the digital trends. And then in 2018 in the UK, we were thrown a surprise with GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation, which questioned what the future of direct mail would look like as people's personal data was shown under the spotlight. So we know marketing has changed and we know now more about people than ever before. 
The customer of today understands when they're being marketed to. Whilst they like to buy, they generally don't like to be sold to, and they are in control like never before. As marketeers, we need to respect that, and then we need to work out how we can sell to them. But this needs to be subtle, it needs to be targeted, and most importantly, it needs to be relevant. The doorstep clutter of the 90s and the early noughties has been replaced by the clutter of the inbox. Direct mail volumes have fallen by 30%, whilst we are receiving up to 120 emails per day. As such, it's imperative that we treat customers as individuals, we're communicating with them on a channel that they want, and we're giving them messages that are highly relevant, which we call hyper-personalization. I've just mentioned direct mail volumes have fallen by 30% since 1990. Please don't all panic, this is good news. I've already mentioned the days of yesterday when what was known as spray and pray was the name of the game. Large run lifeful jobs were mailed out in the hope that one or two would stick. Unpersonalized mail did not deliver. In fact, it gave the industry a bad name. Dare I say the words junk mail. But now as a direct marketing agency, we are not just chucking stuff out. We are delivering crafty and clever marketing. Printers may have raised their eyebrows and asked why we were mailing less, when in fact, we are mailing smaller but more targeted mailings which stack up in the long run. A good supplier of ours now is not ju judged just on the commodity of the print, but also on the return of investment and the response that the mail they are producing are delivering. Furthermore, the silver lining of COVID means that more people are at home and they are interacting with mail more than ever before. And I just want to expand about some of the sentiment behind mail. We see from um, Royal Mail's research that 57% of people claim that receiving mail makes them feel more valued. Sending mail creates a more genuine two-way relationship between brands and consumers. In the UK, we use JIC Mail Data, which is the Joint Industry Committee for Mail, which has been running since 2017 and measures what people do with their mail in the UK. It's similar to Nielsen do for reporting of television. The Q2 findings from JIC Mail, which covered the first UK national lockdown, reported record-breaking double-digit increases in the effectiveness of direct mail and door drops. A whopping 96% of mail is engaged with. Think about this. If the average mail pack, um, which is highly personalised with personal information, is seen by 1.16 people, think about what that means in terms of volumes. If you mailed a million recipients, an additional 160,000 people would see that mail pack, and that is making them feel valued and it's sharing the message around the home. Now, the wonderful thing we know about mail and especially about more targeted and personalized mail nowadays is that it's a very important fit into the whole customer journey. And we know that it works very hard to drive people to go online and also works hard with email. And I think it's really important to differentiate the role that each mail and email have in the marketing mix. So this slide just covers off um, in blue, the different words associated with mail and in orange, the words that are associated with email. So for mail, people feel it's important, it's official, it's formal, it's believable, it's personal, it's considered, it's reliable, it's informative. Whereas email has got quite a different role of being quick, uh, spontaneous, smart, informative, interesting and informal. So it means that we've got a really obvious place where we can use mail, brochures and catalogues, welcome packs, bills and statements, loyalty and rewards, reminders. Whereas using email is very effective for confirming appointments or following up messages or promoting news and updates. And think about it also, if we've got 88% of UK adults on average spending 24 hours every week online, how much of their time are they actually spending offline and where as print service providers have we got opportunities to provide interesting, exciting, tangible mail packs? Taking that into consideration, we see that 70% of the UK say that they feel they receive too many emails. Again, there is a hugely exciting opportunity for us to use mail as part of that marketing mix. And don't forget, the process of creating a mail piece is exactly the same to creating an email. Making sure we utilize the right methods, automate processes, and agree SLAs with our print providers 
we can have mail easily turned around in 24, 48 hours and on doormats within 72 hours. It's then got the potential to stay in the house for up to 17 days. So imagine the potential in that time and the impact it has to our brands. Now, I've just said, obviously, the average lifespan of a direct mail piece is 17 days versus an average lifespan of an email, which is at two seconds. Again, when Royal Mail conducted some further research to ask which was more memorable, they got a result of 44% of people could recall the brand directly after seeing a digital advert, whereas 75% could directly after receiving direct mail. I'm sure, like um, me just now, you're conjuring up all of the amazing direct mail pieces that we see on our doorsteps with all the amazing vivid pictures, colors, personalization. This is what I want to keep talking about in today's presentation. What we've got is an amazing opportunity that print offers hyper-personalized, customer-centric communications. And what I want to look at is how we use this within Inkjet and within personalization. So what we know uh, nowadays is more about our target customers than ever before. And this leverage needs to be transformed to relevant communications and needs to take into account customer behavior and programmatic activity. For us, it's about the theory of relevance. By creating relevance, we create a way to engage with a customer. To create relevance, we need to understand our target market. And this is where data is at the heart of everything that we do. And um, some of you might be familiar with Pareto's law. Um, this is the curve in which 80% of your revenues will come from 20% of your customers, or 80% of your output will come from 20% of your effort. Possibly the most important aspect of any campaign that we work on with our clients is the right data. And with so much available, the trick is finding the best and most reliable data and then profiling and modeling it to ensure the relevance. All kinds of new modeling technology are available cost effectively to ensure that our clients are not wasting money targeting people who will never buy or by mailing people who are no longer uh, in their addresses. That's the key word that I want to get across here. It's about targeting the right people and we want to send them the messages and the offers that are appropriate to them. A recent DMA survey concluded that consumers are seven to 10 times more likely to respond positively to well-targeted and relevant communications. And as we go further into my presentation, I've got some examples that I'm going to share with you. But back to Pareto's law, you will receive 80% of your responses from 20% of your target data. So this is a massive area, and we could discuss this all day, but given the time and our experience, the four key rules here are to understand your customer, to find the potential new customers, to learn more, and to clean your data. And there are multiple data suppliers who will handle this aspect and supply beautiful matrices on your customers and your prospective customers. But then the question we often get is, what do we do next? Some clients think they don't have the data, and that's not really uncommon. But again, there are multiple ways that we can generate data, we can append, we can clean. And even if clients have got the most basic data fields, there are still ways of using it creatively. So this leads us nicely into the second stage this creative and how to maximize what technology we have available. Variable digital technology allows us to take data and create different messages, imagery, and emotion from every individual. And that is the output we're getting from Inkjet. And that is what's making it more relevant and what we love about this craft. So just a quick look at the science behind the personalization. So as I've mentioned, it all starts at the heart of the data, looking at the processes, the insight, and the sourcing. As I've said, we know more about our target customers than ever before. And this leverage needs to be transformed to relevant communications and needs to take into account customer behavior and programmatic activity. The creative and messaging is equally important, looking at the idea, the design, and the personalization. Consumers will expect messages and offers that are highly relevant to them. In turn, we are seeing 30% plus uplifts in ROI. We also implement consumer behavioral data to drive well-timed and relevant messages. For us, it's then all about the contact strategy. It's not just enough to mail relevant messages across different channels. The entire journey of the customer needs to be planned and defined. This encompasses the initial contact through to the entire buying process. Those consumers with the most positive experiences will become the most loyal customers with the highest lifetime value. Championed by direct mail, consumers want to receive relevant messages across multiple channels. And direct mail has evolved from a mistrusted and overused media 
to highly perceived customer experience while single channel digital marketing is on the decline. And that takes us nicely into our results and analytics. The ability to track and measure results with continuous improvement will drive trigger and consumer driven activity. The new standardizations, like I've mentioned with JIC, in measuring will bring direct mail into the same arena as TV and radio. Dashboard analytics and automated trigger messaging is based on consumer response, which again then feeds us back into the data and takes us on the cycle. So I'm talking to you today about maximizing your direct marketing from print, and I'm talking to you from an agency perspective. And what I want to do now is give you some examples of what this has looked like. There's three types of mail product that we commonly use. Um, all are great on their own and even better when they can be used as part of an omni marketing campaign. And I'm just gonna quickly talk you through the three types, door drop, partially addressed mail and direct mail. So as I'm sure many of you are aware, door drop is a fantastic tool at driving awareness of your brand. It's phenomenal to get a mass message out to a broad audience. The strategy is all in the postcode sectors that we're targeting and there's absolutely no personal data used in creating the mail piece. Clever door drop has a clear call to action, whether that's go online, redeem an offer, drive footfall, and the print that the creative that we come up with can cleverly reflect images, copy, and um, creative tones that resonate with your target audience, wherever they may be based. After GDPR was introduced, we saw um, a new um, route to market through partially addressed mail which has been delivering phenomenal results for our clients. This is a way which Inkjet specifically in digital printing has combined beautifully at looking at data and targeting. So the way it works is it's a simple data solution that allows you to target your prospects who live on the same street as your existing customers. Um, so it could be if it was an estate agent, for example, targeting houses that they had um, not sold in the street that they wanted to by marketing to them examples of the properties that they had sold. And then obviously the third is why we're here and the one that we love the most, our beloved direct mail. And um, so that's the address mail pack, which allows you to send absolutely anything and be as creative as you wish. And the personalized opportunities within this is what is driving us amazing engagement and phenomenal results. And under GDPR with legitimate interest, we're seeing a huge return to direct mail as confidence um, regains in the sector for looking at these cold prospects. So I just want to talk you through a few examples here where we are personalizing the messages offline. And this is an example for a high-end insurance company in the UK who used personalization to drive cross-sell. Now, what you can see here is the three yellow mail packs, which are all looking at different audiences. We've got customer profile number one, we've got um, Mrs. Stewart being targeted with car insurance because we know that they'll feel the same way about this as home insurance. Whereas we then have Mrs. Green who's been targeted trailer insurance because we know that they have already got four by four insurance. And lastly, we've got Mr. Colton who's being targeted for pony insurance because we know that they have already got family protection. So we're showing three very different audiences, very different packs, that are much more relevant and targeted towards them. And the proof is in the figures. The standard direct mail packs that were sent out previously, much higher volumes, 99,832,000, um, had a response rate of just below 1% um, and was generating revenue of 64,000. But by making these clever changes, using the printing capabilities, creating highly personalized offerings, the volume was reduced, but the response rate nearly tripled and the revenue generated absolutely soared. So this is a perfect example of how we work with our clients and we work with our suppliers to deliver much more effective communications. Um, another example we've got here is with one of our clients, People's Postcode Lottery, who after GDPR, the risks surrounding cold data were deemed too great, um, resulting in the loss of personalized mail as an acquisition channel. The hit, was going to be dramatic. Circa 30% of the players were recruited via mail. However, fewer players meant less income, so less support for good causes, and we needed to fill this hole. So what we did was we looked at DoorDrop, which was the only channel which hadn't yet been optimized for recruitment. And to deliver the numbers, we needed to rethink everything. We had to look at the creative, we had to look at the data, we had to look at the timing, we had to look at the media integration. 
and we transformed the door drop from a mass mopping up channel to a personal channel driven by a targeting algorithm that directly converted best prospects to players. And we did this by creating a simple, straightforward door drop built entirely from consumer insight. So the pack was personalized throughout to make it more relevant and the sign up more motivating. We also worked with Royal Mail on eye tracking to see what sort of response the mail pack received in the first nanoseconds when somebody looked at it. And together, you'll see here the before and then the after, a very different looking pack. And these big changes delivered big results for us. Through new audiences um, and our audience targeting, we had a more personal and more engaging creative story and the precise timing of the door drop delivered a whopping 398% increase in sales conversion. It also dropped um, the cost per acquisition of 76% compared to the pre-GDPR pack. Here's an example of how partially addressed mail has also been um, a great way to use digital print to drive personalized messaging based on customer location and local dealerships. Um, what Audi wanted to do was target customers based on the Audi drivers within a specific dealership drive time postcode, and they used partially addressed mailing to invite these drivers to visit promotional sales events. Again, it was low volume mailings per dealership, but they were highly personalized and they delivered significant returns. One of the dealerships reported that they mailed out 1,200 records. They were booked in for 41 appointments, which resulted in 30 sales. Now think about how much an Audi car costs and the amount of work that went in the front end to identify the prospect and deliver a targeted message has absolutely delivered fantastic results. Doing a lot of the planning and the hard work up front can pay off in the long run. And this example here is something we did with Edinburgh Zoo, who needed a campaign that would engage their existing members and encourage them to stay with their membership for longer. Our solution was to create a member birthday campaign and send personalized birthday cards containing a voucher for the members for their birthday, which they could use in the cafes. All the work was done in the December of the previous year with imagery selected, um, copy content all selected so that it was an automated process each month that the client just had to supply the data and we did all the hard work for them. It proved to be a phenomenal success and the vouchers um, were redeemed in the um, zoo cafes with an average upsell per member of £21. Um, and from this we were able to roll out other campaigns to basically reward these members and make them feel like their membership was giving more than just entry to the zoo. Working with our clients to keep their clients engaged is a huge part of our job and we know how much it costs to acquire a customer and then we know what we must do to retain them. This is an example of one of our clients who we've worked with for many years on data-led personalized booklets and as you'll see across the journey here it has completely changed throughout the years. What we do is we create 10 versions of creative for each page of the 10 page booklet, which means that each customer is getting something absolutely personalized and relevant to them. We see it exactly the same with supermarkets. You know, if you're getting your coupons for your Tesco Club card, your Sainsbury's Nectar card, your Boots Advantage card, it's all about making sure that you're interpreting the data and that you're giving your customers something that's really relevant. What we are finding very exciting and interesting here at Dragonfly is looking at the future of data interpretation and the fact that now it's not just going to be about age, gender, buying habits, but it's also going to be about mindset analysis. And I want to just talk you through this quick example. Um, so this is a case study whereby we have got the bike as the item that is being sold. And we've got two females who are buying exactly the same bike. We've got Kat and we've got Chris. And on the data spreadsheet, they look like they're very similar. They're female, they're from a demographic D2 code, they're aged between 25 to 34, they've got a good income level and they own their own home. So as a marketeer sending out the next direct marketing pack, you could think that they would both want exactly the same thing. However, if we delve deeper, excuse me, if we delve deeper into the data segmentation, we can see the mindset analysis here. So Kat, she, has got a mindset of climate conscious. So what she's particularly interested in is brands such as Corn, North Face, Patagonia. She enjoys um, influencers like Greta Thunberg, David Attenborough, 
And she is very much buying the bike so that she is cycling instead of um, using public transport or driving a car. Whereas Chris, who's bought exactly the same bike, her mindset is about fitness. And she is all about going on triathlons, going to the gym, her nutrition. She likes um, titles like Women's Health. She likes Joe Wicks. So if we were to work with this um, brand on what they would be doing in their next direct mail piece, we would be very much thinking about the upsell to Cat, which could be a helmet made out of recycled water bottles. Whereas for Chris, what we would be looking at is perhaps a pedometer for her bike so that she can see how many um, pedals she's getting in and how it's improving her fitness. And it's by continually learning and looking at this data is what's helping us to further shape our direct marketing and our direct mail going forward. And this is what we find hugely exciting. So what we see is that the multi-channel personalization works. And what I hope you see is that you can maximize your direct marketing in print. Because as a result of rece receiving direct mail, we've got amazing results and figures. 43% of people download something, 54% of people engage in social media, 86% of people connect with businesses, 87% of people influence to make an online purchase, 92% are driven to online or digital activity. What we're constantly looking to do through print is to close the customer journey loop. And what we want to make sure is that everything creates an action. Now, speaking openly and frankly to the print service providers out there, what we love seeing as an agency is the fact that Inkjet has moved on so far over the last few years. Quality has moved on, but we still want you to show us the proof. And we still see that there are some challenges. Looking specifically, what we would like is to analyze what are the top priorities? What are we wanting to get off these presses? Is it high volume? Is it low volume? That's the wonderful thing about Inkjet. We can print one or we can print a million. How is that reflected in price? What does it mean for colors? What does it mean for environmental impacts? What does it mean on how quickly we can get things off the press and into the letterbox? What does it mean for ease and again for efficiencies if things can be wrapped in one piece mailers instead of put into an envelope? And these are the conversations that we love having, but we want to have more of. So dear suppliers, please can you continue to work with agencies like us, but also with clients that you work with. Please continue to showcase what you've got. We would love to see every example and sample because it's from that that we learn and that we continue to sell the craft and the trade. We know we're obviously all working from home because of COVID, but there are still ways to get us before and after books, to get us mock-ups. Um, as I've already mentioned, if Inkjet can do one to one million items, but we rarely see a sample, show us it. We'd love to see it. Um, show us samples from that specific press. If we are going out to our print service providers to ask them to quote and work with us on jobs, then include details of the press the job's going to be done on in the re request for quote that you're returning or send us a pack of samples that have come off that press. So again, we can sell it into our client. Please continue to learn with us. Look at the data with us. Where can we drive the personalization? Where can we look at the mindset? Hold wash up meetings with us. What worked, what didn't work? What was efficient at your end? What could have been more efficient at our end? Look at a whole new way that we price this up. Is there risk and reward? Yes, we're not doing large, large um, print jobs, we're doing smaller, more targeted, but in turn, that is going to continue to feed more into the network. So what does the bigger picture look like and how can we readdress or refresh how we look at how things are billed or um, charged onto us? So in conclusion, um, we know that personalization is at the key of this and it's delivering relevance, which, deliver oh, excuse me, which delivers results. And we've seen that time and time again with our direct marketing. We know inkjet capabilities are amazing and we want to continue to work with you to unleash that and to grow that. COVID has opened up huge new opportunities which must be seized. People are at home, people are wanting to be engaged with relevantly. They don't just want everything to be digitally served to them through their inbox um, and we must take this opportunity on. And please continue to work in collaboration with us. Knock on our door because we see the future together and we look forward to working on it with you. Thank you very much for your time. I'm now going to stop sharing and look forward to taking some questions. Wow. Again, 
Um, I always get, get amazed when I hear conversations and presentations like this one because, uh, you know, I come from the printer side. I know, uh, I know that Jean, she has her goodie bag is bigger than mine um, <laughs> in that relation. And, and I can't help think about that. Um, uh, this seems that this is a huge opportunity for printers if they want to, right? Because this is a, this is an opportunity where uh, not only the brands are interested, you also have agencies like the Dragonfly. You also seems that the customers are appreciated. I mean, so everybody in this value chain seems to be way more aligned with getting relevant information instead of just getting spammed, so to speak, right? Absolutely. That's exactly mm. what we've seen. We've so, when people work, what's relevant? Yeah. Carry on. Yeah, no, absolutely that, Jean. I'm just saying it is all about making the jobs that we do with our suppliers for our clients be as relevant as possible. And there's so many opportunities out there. It's just teamwork that's going to help collaborate to get this going further. One thing I can't help think about, what I really liked was uh, the, the, the slides or in the end of your presentation also where you reach out to uh, print service providers. Um, and I think this is something that, uh, that print, print service providers should actually uh, take you up upon because I think that what you also say, you didn't say that directly because everybody <laughs> wants to save a little bit, but I was just wondering, do you think that since this has a higher ROI for the brand owners, and I take that since this is your living, you you charge whatever you need to charge for it. I think that the printing industry for years have been under tremendous uh, stress financially because, uh, I mean, if everybody delivers the same product, prices are commoditized to some extent. Here it seems that the smart people and the one that invest in technology that can support that marketing communication that you talk about, they are actually up for having premium prices on their on their products. Is that extending it a little bit too much, or what do you think? <laughs> well, I think you know one of the ways that we work with our suppliers and clients is on a, a test pack and a control pack. So this is where again working as a partnership is really mm -hmm. important because for the control pack we can say for six months it's going to be a certain format, a certain volume, and we can agree a price in bulk for that. And then that frees up a pot of money to let us have fun and to let us test. Let us test the presses. Let us test the capabilities. Let's work with us. Print off one to show us what it looks like. And then we'll print off a million and roll it out. And I think that's where we have to continue to work as a partnership in the industry is that it's looking at the bigger mm. picture, not just at the one job that's in front of us. But, you know, what does that mean for the next six months, 12 months, 18 months down the line? I appreciate that 100%. The reason I'm asking is because we in the in the printing industry we are in a paradigm shift because we go from technology that now is capable of maybe replacing other technologies. And and that that requires massive investments and I'm just asking because you know if the printing companies are wondering, hmm, should I go into this uh, <laughs> segment of the market uh, with just a lower price point basically that would require enormous volume to compensate for it. So did I hear you right saying that since this ha has a higher value, maybe it also has a higher value for the printer to actually offer this technology? Yeah, absolutely. And I think as well, um, you know, it is looking at, like I say, the whole journey. So it is looking at the data. And again, I mean, the, the wonderful thing with, with our suppliers that have got this um, technology is they are the experts in it. So they can sell to us the capabilities of it and how looking at the data together with us, we can continue to evolve and to develop mail packs that are different, that stand out on the doormat. And that is what we are wanting to constantly drive in the industry is relevance that delivers these results. So yes, there's, there's definitely a, a currency within that. It just comes down to the conversations. Of course. So I know I've seen a few of the um, uh, jobs that you deliver and it's not just about the press because yes we talk about inkjet and it's great but finishing becomes a big big part of this because it's the finishing that it does it's not finished till it's finished and I always say that but it it does give that final touch to it you know we you that's the thing that you that's going to attract you to open it and that's the thing that is is, is also a key differentiator is it not oh absolutely yes and again the advancement in that with, you know, old school litho that we'd have to dry for ages and now digital can come off the press and go out much quicker. I mean, 
speed is what everybody wants, isn't it? So these sorts of advancements are fabulous. And then, you know, people make up their mind in a nanosecond when they pick something up, if they like it or not, or if they're intrigued to open it, or if they're going to put it on the kitchen table and leave it till later. So we want to always look at, you know, the different touch points of the journey from the moment it's produced to the moment it lands to then the moment somebody's going to convert from, you know, an, an action to um, follow through with that journey of why they've opened the mail piece. So, yeah, that's really important. We got a question from uh, the audience, uh, Chris Mallory. Mallory. Uh, Ayla, how do your how do your clients react to the DIC mail stats when you share, and do you use them when pitching? The JIC mail stats. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, they absolutely love them. I mean, this has been one of the things that has definitely transformed our industry. Um, is the fact that we've now got currency. So you know. Back to the old days of spray and pray, whereby lots of mail would go out and you'd hope somebody would phone a track number or they would, you know, respond and um, buy a product. Now we can actually put, you know, proper measurables onto how people interact with mail. So the way Jick Mail works is there's a thousand panelists in the UK who all have a device. They scan their mail and they talk about the commercial actions that they've done when they receive it. And it gets reported on quarterly. Um, and yeah, you can pull off facts and stats for any brand, for, you know, the mail that consumers have received and what they've done with it, the longevity it has in the home and the number of times it's interacted with or shared. And again, all these learnings is what helps keep shape how we improve the mail journey and how we drive these efficiencies. Ralf Schlösser, who is uh, going to follow you as a speaker, he's asking, are advertisers still worried about GDPR when using direct mail? Again, I would say the gift of time is helping us here. Um, when GDPR came out in 2018, it was a big gulp for the industry because obviously it came down to consent or legitimate interest by the ways in which you communicated with your data. However, I firmly believe, maybe it's because my glass is half full, that it was the best thing that happened to the industry um, because it's made people more accountable for their data. So, I mean, you really want to be speaking to people who want to hear from you. Otherwise, it's a waste of key resource and budget. You know, you wouldn't send mail to people that no longer lived in the addresses. So why would you send mail to people that genuinely just don't want to hear about your brand? So it's been a great way to clean up um, and sort out data. And now as confidence re returns, um, you know, as I, as I mentioned, you know, you've got DoorDrop that has no data required, partially addressed, which has been amazing to build that gap. And now direct mail is certainly having a resurgence with cold data because brands are more confident under legitimate interest that they've got a reason to speak to a targeted audience. Mm. And we've been doing more cold campaigns and the results are really the proof in the pudding for that, which is great. An extension to that one. I know you're burning questions, Jean, but uh, I was just wondering, um, just of curiosity with the, the Brexit, is GDPR still I mean, will that continue in the UK or is that something that has been uh, talked about how if, if that will be changed? Yeah, so at the moment, I believe that there's a there's a six month um, extent, extension on the GDPR rules um, for companies in the UK that are still um, sourcing or sending data into Europe. Um, and okay. so it will come down to obviously each individual organization and what their plan is going to be if they're processing or controlling data in in Europe um, okay. mm -hmm. but it's been a, a lot of our clients have asked that question but um for us a lot of our clients in the UK just are mailing in the UK and in South Africa we're starting to look at poppy and what that's going to mean when it comes into force shortly yeah so I want to ask a question um about the profile of a salesperson that comes oh, in because I get asked this when I go to printers, um, how, where do I find the right person that can sell this? Because a traditional print salesperson puts ink on paper, he sells speeds and feeds of machines. You, I mean, yes, to a point, you do care how fast it goes and how quick you can get your direct mail, but that's not your priority. So if you had to look at, and I'm putting you on the spot of it, but the profile of the person that talks your language, that knocks on your door that you're going to take seriously, kind of... Give me a few key key things here that I could share with print that we could share with the printers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, that already conjures up lots of people that we already work with. So the good news is there's lots of brilliant people out there. So that is working. 
Um, so yeah, these salespeople, they need to, um, it's almost like what we preach, like understand us and our, our data. So, you know, where we come from. So we've got a client whose knowledge is not probably, um, you know, as experienced as it is ours or as the supplier on what these presses can do. So sometimes it needs to be, you know, back to basics. So that's where the sample packs are brilliant. Because obviously, if you're holding something tangible, you can see it um, and you can discuss it and you can, you know, understand where the capabilities lie. So I think making sure, yeah, we get Same things filter. sent to us um, and then talk through it like a workshop. You know, it doesn't need to be a hard sale. We don't need to have numbers, you know, thrown into the realm right from the beginning. Because a lot of the time, yes, we know the person that we're speaking to with our direct marketing. But, you know, the creative flair is where it gets exciting and where brands want to stand out from their competitors. So if there is something that's been tested on a press, tell us about it and tell us, you know, how quickly can it be done? What's the minimum print run, maximum print run? You know, if it's worked for somebody else, if it's not and you want to try it and we'll come on a journey and test it with you. I think, you know, that salesperson needs to have quite an open, broad mind and be there to, you know, come on the good journeys with us and, God forbid, if things go wrong, be there to help us if it does go wrong. Because like I said at the start of my presentation, our suppliers are very much our colleagues and um, we work hand in glove with them. They are yeah. why we're here. So um, yeah, honesty, open-mindedness. But I mean, print samples are always, yeah. Okay, and, and that's great because like you said, having the right samples, because if you've got the right toolbox with you, that just, you the creative, you're going to see a couple of those samples and your mind is going to go, oh my gosh, we can do this, we can create this and tie it in that way. So, you know, a good toolbox, you know, we've got somebody presenting on print samples tomorrow and it's just such a key because it's a topic yeah, of conversation absolutely. all the time. I can't, uh, I, when I saw these um, posters with this, I think it was an insurance company, right? With these three different, uh, where you had like these yeah. two. Yeah, yeah. I was just wondering because um, personalization has of course been uh, around for some time in different kinds of methods and ways of doing it and also to the degree of uh, of how personalization takes place uh, again one of the things that i think that uh, the 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 inkjet vendors are pushing quite a lot is that you get higher quality uh, uh, you have now full uh, customization of any, anything from photos to text to whatever you need have you made any statistics on uh, whether uh, i mean is there a degree of personalization that changes the interaction with the with the recipient of uh, of a DM dmps um to be honest they, everyone is so unique that you know again if it comes down to our the clients that we do control and test with on the test we could test the image we could test the personalization by including their name on the outer we could test the color we could test you know there's a multitude of ways that we test and um, and that's again part of the joy of the craft is you learn what people respond to and then you learn where you need to make those tweaks to continue so so we see, so we see it. Um, we get learnings from every campaign, of course. So would you say? I mean, I'm just I'm just trying to to understand. So so um, the 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 focus we have in the industry on making it even better print quality and bigger, uh, wider color gamut and all these kind of things uh, is that something that you believe that your customers will have a demand for it or is it more because we can and then we can also use that technology to replace uh, uh, conventional uh, printing technologies or, or how do you see that interaction? Yeah, again, I think it comes down to the different brands and sectors that are mailing. So certainly, you know, um, for companies like um, Homeware um, who are doing beautiful catalogs, you know, these are becoming coffee table special hero pieces so they become better better everything becomes better and better basically yeah absolutely yeah. Yeah. but again the personalization within that can be on the fact that you could have an online account you've bought the coffee table and you've bought the rug and then they're sending you these beautiful pieces that complete the look of the rest of the house and you know you're not going to go on as soon as you receive that brochure and go and buy something but you're going to keep it you're going to look at it you're going to think oh actually yeah that Curtain would look lovely next to that lamp and would complete the room. And that's where I think, yeah, again, there's um, there's lots of things. Upselling and cross-selling. Absolutely. Upselling and cross-selling. 
Yeah, which is great. I mean, that's that's really taking advantage of that. You know, as soon as you buy something or scan a QR code, you've purchased off a catalog, they know you bought that couch, so these cushions and this rug will go with it. So, I mean, that opportunity is a kind Absolutely. of endless. I have also another, in the same kind of area, because I'm curious about it, is like, uh, have you, I mean, you you probably have, but have you also tested whether the response rates are different based on what type of substrate is printed on? Oh, that's a good question. Um, we haven't done as detailed a test on the substrate recently, but again, would love to speak to a supplier if they wanted to test that. I was just thinking that it there. could be fantastic to see if there's like, because I mean, you know, uh, I think that my friends, they always uh, make uh, fun of me for many reasons, but the one thing is that when I get a print sample, I always, mm, 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 yeah, well, that's a definitely offset or. <laughs> <laughs> get the coin, get the coin, get, get the coin yeah. and maybe, awesome, maybe yeah. chocolate print on inkjet could make the whole difference. Who knows? <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, well, we'd love to give it a go, I'm sure. So we're up for anything here. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, good things comes to an end and uh, we are almost there. I don't know if there's any further questions among our audience. Uh, You've got some appreciations again from Chris uh, Molloy and Victor Victoria Grant and Moira Lambert. So uh, it's always good to get appreciations, right? Thank you very much. Mm. I it was fantastic. Yeah, I appreciate your time. And uh, I think that uh, for the PSPs that see this live or in the replays, they should definitely reach out to you or to some of your colleagues because I think that you sent out an open invitation that that the collaboration on a, on a, on a, a producer side and on the creative side and, and the campaign side is something that... Uh, could basically uh, turn out to be a very good investment in time for both parties, right? Yeah, absolutely. We're always open to the conversation. We love talking, so we're happy to connect with anybody and to brainstorm ideas. Perfect. And for the audience here, um, the, the last session of today is the next session, which is uh, um, by Elizabeth Gooding and Ralf Schlösser from uh, Inkjet uh, Insight in the US and Germany, by the way. And um, they are going to do a um, very uh, interesting, I know it will be interesting because I know them both, a session called Trends, Changes and Solutions. And uh, uh, as Jean and I said in our morning session this morning, I think that they are probably one of the companies or or media or whatever you, where you put them that are they know absolutely the most about Inkjet and is a invaluable resource of Inkjet. So, I think you should just, um, I am actually sending you a redirect link now. So now uh, people can say goodbye to uh, Ayla and Jean and, uh, yeah, and Jean and I, I we will see each other you. in a second in another webinar, right? Thank you, Ayla, and talk Thank to you, you soon. Thank you so much. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you, Ayla. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank Bye -bye. you.